Okay, we're at uh, Gamble Plantation, Judah P. Benjamin Confederate Memorial, Gamble Mansion. Getting ready to do the tour. You're talking. Wonderful. You know what I say? That's a good one too. It is. I would like and invite you to sit for a moment while we have the orientation. It'll take a couple of minutes, and if you so just we'll stand up. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm your tour guide, and it's my pleasure to say howdy, hello, and to tell you my name. It's June. If you have questions, please I'll answer them. I have been here 25 years as an interpreter and, uh, of the gamble history, and boy do I like it. For 25 years you'd have to like it. Absolutely. And I have gone all the way up to Tallahassee and dug through their records and everything, but I'm getting to that place now, it's hard to remember. <laughs> I'm getting a message. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm still here today and welcome you. Uh, the Gamble Plantation. No relation to Gamble as in Proctor Gamble. Okay, if you find it, call us. <laughs> Actually, don't call us here. We, uh, we would direct you to a phone number up in Tallahassee. And that is where the state offices are for all of the folks in Florida. We have 176 parks of which 53 are historical. And uh, I don't know, you hit them all, it's really very interesting, but you will find that we're basically not the camping park, but just the historical parks with a lot to tell you about history. I had a customer who, we have two people joining us, which is why I'm kind of diverting away. But I had two people who came to see us about a month ago, and the gentleman said to me something that was very startling. He said, you know, we've been all over Florida now. You guys don't really have much history. <laughs> <laughs> I about fell over. I bet. So I have been, you know, laying in bed and thinking, come on, come on, where? Where's that place? And thinking, you know, maybe we don't have all the history. It would be a newer history in a lot of ways. But, uh, well, if you find something interesting, send us a line, would you? Just write and say, hey, we found another one that's interesting. Gotcha. Maybe not a state park. That's the difference. We've got 53, like I said, historical state parks. You have a ticket. <laughs> you don't have to collect them. Uh, all right. All I have to do is look at them. All right. You got a ticket. I know these all do. Okay, <laughs> it is time. We heard you're the best in silver. So excited. Oh, that's my buddy, George. He's just Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my oldest son. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. I'm good at it. I'm good at it. I'm good at it. But it, it's like all these rangers here, uh, the one who's in charge of all the rangers, I've known him 25 years too, Ted. So he really is like an adopted son. Gamble, no relationship to Proctor Gamble. We've looked for it. If you find out, let us know. But so far, that has not been connected. Um, Robert Gamble uh, was a very intelligent man, a very well educated man. He was an engineer amongst other things. He, had, he fought for the seven years of the Second Seminole Indian War. It was over in 1842. All during his seven years down in this area fighting Seminoles. And by the way, that relationship still isn't the greatest one in the whole world, and you can kind of understand it. It's the people who were forced into a migration, they wanted nothing, no part of it. Uh, but anyway, Robert uh, fought that seven years, all in this area down here. And he fell in love with it. And guys, you used to keep journals. You did. You wrote down stuff that was interesting. Hey, I've been here. I saw a rattlesnake or whatever it is, or how I saw a crocodile. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's very interesting, your input into the history around here, what was going on. It's a whole different slant from the guys, from the gals. You know that the ladies did write the journals. And anyway, he kept a journal. 
and it's invaluable to us. And it's stored, the original is up in Tallahassee where it should be, in the archives. But nonetheless, Robert wrote in to his journal, quote, I think that the Manatee River is the most beautiful river I have ever seen. You all know which river I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen it directly south of us. As a matter of fact, straight down that road with that car coming toward us, okay, that dark hedge at the end, if you jump over that or can fight your way through it, you're going to be at the river. And uh, anyway, he fell in love with the area, and he knew, because he had a dream, and he was going to put his dream here. His father had left Richmond, Virginia, that's where the family had their home, uh, high up on a block above the James River, Richmond, and it was designed by Latrobe, Benjamin Latrobe himself, and I'm sure architecturally you all know who Latrobe is. But uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> the house is gone. I did call up the Chamber of Commerce to check this out because I was to visit. But at least they kept the name of the road going up. It's still called Gamble's Hill, but the house is long gone. And that's, that's really sorry. But still in all, the Gamble's Forge, very, very famous people. Uh, you're going to find them in history. As a matter of fact, let's talk about the first ones to arrive on this continent in 1735. That was a Robert Gamble. This is where the, there is no imagination in naming children at that time. You've got John Robert William over and over <laughs> and over again. And you forget which one you're reading about eventually. But to make a long story short, this is about a battle fought on the Mohawk River. It was called Stony Point, and a young gamble fought on that ship and was victorious. He was very brave. But you see, the credit for that kind of accomplishment went always to the captain of the ship. It was just that way. So every he's <laughs> helping me. He objects. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, you know, things are going on. Captain da da da. But you see, the boys in the camp are twittering. We know it was young Gamble. We knew. Well, the twitterings get to George Washington. And he says, I want to meet this young man. So they brought him to George's tent. And the two of them, it was an instant bond. Have you ever met somebody like that? You don't know why, what it is about that person, but you feel like you've known them your whole life through. And you're just comfortable with them. And that's the relationship between young Robert and George Washington. As a matter of fact, their history and uh, those journals and documents of, you know, invitations, formal ones and everything in the records, they all reflect that they visited one another at each other's home. One of the Gamble girls married this nation's very first attorney general, William Ward, married in the White House. I don't have to tell you any more of achievement. He was wildly successful in the beginning because he was a progressive. He used two 50 horsepower steam engines to run that mill. And when you see that mill, you're going to see that it was very progressive looking. But anyway, competition is happening. You got sugar coming up here by the bucket load. And it's coming from things like St. Croix. Cuba, places like that down in the Caribbean. And so all of a sudden you've got so much sugar laying on the pier, the rats and mice are carrying it off. And that's when Robert had to pack it in, 1856 And uh, we'll resume the rest of the story when we get in. Last thing I'll tell you is the house is Greek Bible, but I'm going to tell you a magical word. It's called vernacular. Vernacular means when you deviate away from the traditional to accommodate a characteristic native to the area. I had to memorize that. <laughs> okay. Could you tell? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> the characteristic native around here, there's two of them. You got Seminole. Yeah. That's enough to, you know, put the fear of God in you. Uh, they're quite aggressive. Now, Robert had a special relation with a very powerful local chief around here. His name was known for locally around here, Billy Bowlegs. I'm sure if you like history at all, you've read about him. 
I think his official name, and I might have it backwards, is Mokata Holapa, or Holata Makata. <laughs> it's one or the other. But still in all, uh, Robert did sit down with the man. They came to an agreement. You don't come over here and bother me. I'm not going to come over there and bother you. And it's one they both could respect. Uh, but anyway, he left, like I said, here in 1856, and we'll resume the rest of the story on that. <coughs> Last thing, the house is clean. Okay. Typical Greek revival vernacular. Remember the vernacular I was telling you about? What you did was design your house that you're never trapped in any place. There's <coughs> always another way to get out. The hallway, I'm going to show you another door to egress out of. In here, what you would do if you were followed into this room is just simply kick out that shutter and climb over as quickly as you could over the sill. And so you're never trapped in any room of this house. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay, this is Robert Gamble's father, John Bratton Gamble. And uh, like I said, they're of Scottish descent. And uh, they spent a little under 100 years in Ireland in their migration to this continent. And this gentleman is the one that had the bank up in Tallahassee, John Grattan Gamble. Beyond that, he was John Marshall's private secretary. We all know about John Marshall in our history, Marshall Law, and so forth. This was his secretary, who sent painstakingly and wrote the whole thing out. And later on, when they got back and everything was over over there, they were next door neighbors. So, yeah, impressive. Okay, this house was in a sorry state. It was not only very, very unattractive with things falling down, okay, no paint, ugly, but it snowed to high heaven. You see, it had become a silo for fertilizer. And to make a song, uh, people around here couldn't wait for them to tear it down. It was on the dock that to be torn down. All of a sudden, the ladies of the United Daughters of the Confederacy showed up. UDC is how I will refer to them. They are dear, sweet people. They have saved a lot of structures, buildings, and so forth throughout the South. And uh, we owe them a debt of gratitude, that's for sure. They saved the gamble. And uh, then when they got the tally for how much it would cost to restore it, that's when they sold it to the state for one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> they were smart, let me tell you. And that does entitle them. I have read that contract. And it gives them entitlement to certain things, like some of their things are in this house in charge of them. But anyway, this is a piano that belongs to the UDC. Wow, what a story. This is made of rosewood, folks. Rosewood, just like what you imagine it is. I didn't know how dear that was until a young lady crossed that threshold and she started squealing. Oh my, it's a bones, it's a bones. Well, I didn't know what was going on. Her mother was with her and calmed her down. The young lady then shared, she's a concert pianist at Carnegie Hall. She performs actually all over the world. And this young lady said, I have played a those piano. I've played one. And she said, seeing as how it's made of rosewood, it gives it a tone that is unachievable on any other piano between their friends. They would have many a dinner here and invite the military, mainly their military buddies, or their neighbors. There were the Clarks. He had the first hotel here. And it is rumored that he was an adopted son of the wealthiest family in Florida, up in Jacksonville. Uh, but anyway, he built a hotel in Tampa and then came here and built another hotel. His name was Josiah Gates. And after them came the Clarks, there you got your first dry goods store. What stories I could tell you about that, and I'm told that it's fine. 